The parents and recently rescued Chibo girls are urging the federal government to secure the release of the remaining 92 classmates still held captive by Boko Haram militants. Their plea comes as the Chibo community marks the solemn 10-year anniversary since the abduction of 276 school girls from government secondary school Chibok. Charles Davis Beatrice Karuzzi reported on the 10 years remembrance. Take a look. Government secondary school Chibok saw a significant influx of residents, visitors and parents of Chibok girls, including some who had been rescued during the early hours of Sunday. The gathering commemorated the 10-year mark since the adoption of 276 school girls by Boko Haram terrorists in 2014, an event that garnered global attention and condemnation. As prayers were offered for the remaining girls still in captivity, emotions ran high, leading to tearful moments. Attendees also took the opportunity to share their thoughts and reflections on the anniversary. The 10-year anniversary of the Chibos adoption served as a painful reminder of the ongoing challenges that our community and our nation face in addressing the threat of the insolvency and the protection of our students. It is a call to action for all of us to redouble our efforts in ensuring the safety and security of our people, particularly young girls who are the future of our nation. Let us work fearlessly to ensure that the poor girls and all those who have been abducted abducted are returned, are, are reunited with their families and given the opportunity to rebuild their lives. I visited places in the world for my official engagement. I visited Germany, I visited Switzerland, I visited America many times, I visited Dominican Republic, and each time they notice I'm a Nigerian, the first person they will ask, how about the Chibo school girls? Call that wherever those girls are, I know they are not in one place, they are scattered all over. Now God will make a way of escape for them. On our own part, we we'll continue to do our best to make sure that we we'll continue to provide the needed security to the good people of Chibok and the entire area where uh, this brigade is uh, covering. So I use this opportunity also to call on all the terrorists out there who are still in the bush that the area they come out and surrender to Tony Ludi, the better for them because they will not continue. Even after a decade, 89 girls remain unaccounted for, leaving many parents still holding on to hope and waiting anxiously for the safe return of their daughters. All eyes are on the federal government to ensure the rescue and safe return of these girls. Beatrice Kuruti, Trust TV News, Medugri. In the same vein, the Kibaku community in Chibok local government area located in eastern Borneo State is demanding the release of the General Sabu Fact Finding Report that uh, shed light also in 2024. Now, this report sheds light on the circumstances that led to the infamous abduction of the Chibok girls, among other key finders. The request was made by the national president of the Kibaku Area Development Association during the 10th year commemoration of the abduction. Noel Samson has the details in this report. As the community commemorates the 10th year since the adoption of the Chibok girls, tears fill the eyes of many. Amidst this horrible occasion, community members are seeking answers from the Bruno state government. They want to know under what guise and by what legal authority the state government permits the controversial and concerning practice of arranging marriages between returning girls and purportedly repentant terrorists. Additionally, they are questioning how the voices of these girls themselves, as those of their parents or guidance, have been taken into account in decisions regarding their rehabilitation and reintegration process. Are there support services 
by the Borno State Government specifically tailored to address the psychological and emotional needs of these girls who may have experienced trauma during their captivity? Number four, what measures have the Borno State Government put in place to ensure the safety and security of the girls both in Maiduguri and upon their eventual return to Chiba? Number five, how can the parents and or the guardians of the girls be actively involved in the planning and implementation of the programs aimed at their rehabilitation and reintegration into society? Number six, are the girls currently residing in Meduguri housed with the repentant, so-called repentant Boko Haram uh, terrorists or are they housed separate, separately? That's why I said these are piercing questions. They're not yes or no questions. The community also issued demands to both the Borneo state government and the federal government. This includes the immediate release of the General Sabu Fact Finding Committee report from 2014 and the urgent release of the rescued Chibo girls currently in the custody of the Borneo state government, among other pressing requests. We need an upgrade of the secondary school in Chibo from where they were removed because for those who have visited Chibo recently, would understand what, what we're talking about here. The so-called rehabilitation is it, it, only good on, on pages of the newspapers and on the electronic media. We want those schools to be properly rehabilitated and put to better use. Number five, immediate disclosure of all the names of the daughters reported to be dead as witnessed and established by their classmates and friends while in captivity. There's no dodging the bullet here. Two of the parents have since gotten the news of the passing of their daughters and have brought a closure on their own. Sadly so. The parents and the community leadership want this position taken immediately rather than the endless and the hopeless waiting that we think is playing the ostrich. In 2014, we cried and we said as a movement that we are all Chibok girls. We said that as a way to garner a collective outcry to forestall the unnatural occurrence of the abduction. Regrettably, <coughs> 10 years on, we are all indeed Chibok girls. Incidents of attacks on schools have spread to the Northwest and even southern Nigeria. So far, 80 new incidents of attacks on schools have now been documented, with more than 1,800 students and 64 teachers abducted, while 184 students and 15 teachers have been reportedly killed. Ten years have passed since the infamous night of April 14, 2014 when Boko Haram insurgents stormed the government girls' secondary school in Chibok, Borno State, adopting 276 girls and igniting global outrage. A decade later, the fate of 89 of these girls remain uncertain. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. A decade has passed since the tragic abduction of the Chibok schoolgirls in Nigeria, a day that remains stamped in the memories of many. Now carrying with it a heavy weight of sorrow and longing. As families affected by this tragedy reflect on their children still held in captivity, their hearts ache with a mixture of hope and despair, yearning for the safe return of their loved ones. Recently in Chibok, Gaza Yakubu witnessed firsthand the ongoing plight of the victims and their families. His report. What are we asking for? Ten years have passed since the harrowing night when Boko Haram militant stormed into government girls' secondary school in Chibok, Nigeria, and abducted 276 girls. Though some managed to escape or were later rescued, many remain missing to this day. Esther Yakubo, one of the affected parents, expressed weariness over the government's unfulfilled promises. Ten years is not ten days, no ten weeks, no ten months. They are not even talking about Chibok girls anymore. If the government wants, if the government are care, have, they have cared about us, I think 
our guests will be out by now. Ten years is too much. The parents whose health have worsened with some losing their lives over time are devastated by the situation and hope the return of the remaining girls would help them recover from their ailments. <laughs> to gwara wayan nan da ka gane in ba haka ba wayan su wanda suna can wallahi ba za su iya su zo garin nan ba ma san san tunani ya riga ya cinye musu karfi su tashi su je su yi fusari a ben gida su dawo ba za su iya ba saboda haka ayi mana taimako yadda wayan nan yara in Allah ya daka funan kwana 14 nan ko za mu samu ganin su da ikon Allah da jama'a the Barno State Government, while responding to some of their plight, promises the safe return of the remaining girls. Uh, we will never lose hope. These are our girls. They were stolen, abducted in broad daylight by these criminals. Uh, government uh, is working tirelessly to rescue the remainder of the girls. And uh, I appeal to uh, parents uh, to exercise patience. Uh, rescue mission, rescue operation requires patience and it requires trust in our gallant forces uh, in order to deal with the matter. So uh, I appeal to them, uh, we, we acknowledge their pains, but uh, I appeal to them on behalf of our national government to exercise, continue to exercise patience while we deal with the matter. We will not rest on our oars. We will not allow this criminality to go without being arrested. We will make sure that each of these girls are rescued in good health and reunited with their families. Despite international outcry and efforts to locate and rescue the missing girls, including the Bring Back Our Girls campaign, the fate of many remain unknown. Away from security, an early morning fire has destroyed wares and some other valuables properties in the main market serving Yola Town, one of the town in the Adamawa state capital. Uh, the Yola Town main market is the second major market serving as the commercial hub of the Yola South local government area and the environs. Eyewitnesses said a fire at the Yola Town market started in the early hours of Monday, destroying shops and goods. They said some of the traders who kept the proceeds of the sales of Sunday now regret not taking their money home. They said although fire authorities responded quickly enough, but the intensity of the inferno made containment tough. The cause of the fire is yet to be known as people around the market area ruled out any link to electricity as the entire place was in a blackout throughout the time. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says it is probing intricate web of fraudulent practices in the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development. EFCC spokesman Dele Oyewale said in a statement on Sunday that past and suspended officials of the Humanitarian Ministry were invited by the Commission and investigations into the alleged fraud involving them have yielded the recovery of 32.7 billion naira and four hundred and forty five thousand dollars so far he said discrete investigations by the efcc have opened other fraudulent dealings involving covid 19 funds the world bank loan a batch of recovered loot released to the ministry by the federal government to execute its poverty elevation mandate the EFCC said its investigation has never been about individuals but a system, an intricate web by fraudulent practices.
You're watching Trust News Update. Coming up. Katsuna hits by water scarcity as resident runs out of options. This and more after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. If you are just joining us, this is Trust News Update. Here's a recap of our top stories. Robot to parents of abducted Chibok girl's plea for rescue on 10th anniversary. And fire God's Yola main market. Moving on, Nigeria has emerged the fourth country with people without access to the internet, while India, with 683.7 million, has the global highest. Nigeria has 123.42 million of her citizens offline. The internet has become a cornerstone of modern society, revolutionizing how people communicate, work, learn, and access information. According to the World Bank, as of last year, about 2.6 billion people, one third of the world's population, remain unconnected to the internet. Perennial water scarcity has hit Katsina City and its environs, subjecting residents to prolonged difficulties in getting water. Residents have been battling with the acute water shortages due to supply from Ajua Waterworks and electricity to power boreholes in the ancient city and environs. Abdullahi Ahmadi went round the ancient city and tells us more. <laughs> The population of Katsina Metropolis in 2023 stands at 524,000, showing an increase of 3.76% from 2022 estimates, which in contrast indicates that over half of the people are depending on boreholes for drinking water and other domestic purposes. Water from Ajiwa Dam, constructed in 1958, remains insignificant to the residents after sinking billions of naira for rehabilitation and upgrade of the dam and the waterworks by the immediate past administration in Kazan State. At the moment, each jerrycan of water is sold between 100 to 120 naira in some areas of Kazan City a situation that compounded the harsh economic condition of the residents who are mostly low income earners. The suffering is too much. A cart containing 12 jerrycans of water is sold at 1,200. Okay, this multiplied by 30 days is how much? Where do you think I can get the money from? People are suffering seriously, and it's like authorities concerned are adamant about it. Greater percentage of residents in Kazana City are solely dependent on commercial boreholes for drinking water and other purposes, most of which have collapsed due to inadequate electricity shrinking the livelihood of the people. The commercial borehole owners said they cannot afford fuel to power their boreholes and the electricity supply has deteriorated to a level that it's no longer reliable. The last state administration promised to alleviate the water scarcity but failed. Now, people cannot afford water in Kazana after committing billions in the sector by the immediate past administration. Now, this commercial water point cannot work for some days due to inadequate electricity. They cannot afford fuel to power the boreholes. <laughs> Government on its part is saying it has budgeted billions of naira in its 2024 estimate to address water scarcity affecting the capital city. The management of the state water board asserts. We have never stop supplying water to where we have been supplying before unless where those areas that have not been getting our water due to some blockages or other uh, technical problems 
Residents of the state capital may continue to suffer this perennial water shortage for a while, as there is no apparent sign of relief in the nearest future. Abdullahi Izumayamadi, Trust Television News, Kazina. There is an indication that inflation rate figures for the month of March billed for to release on today by the National Bureau of Statistics may rise by some 40 to 50 basis points. This contrasts with the increase of 180 basis points in January and 98 basis points in February. Ahead of the release by the NBS, independent consumer surveys and econometric models showed that inflation remained on the rise, although the momentum of price increases has slowed down. The reports indicated that inflation may rise from 31.70% in February to 32.20% in March. The Bureau had reported that inflation rate rose by 180 basis points from 29.90% in January to 31.70% in February. Food inflation heightened by 251 basis points to 37.92%, while core inflation rose by 154 basis points to 25.13%. Away from Nigeria, the United Kingdom and United States has condemned Iran's attack on Israel during an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council on Sunday. It comes as the US assisted Israel in shooting down dozens of drones and missiles fired by Iran in what was the first time it had launched a direct military assault on Israel. Israeli authorities said 99% of the inbound weapons were shot down without causing any significant damage. U.S. Deputy Ambassador to the U.N. Robert Wood urged members uh, to unequivocally condemn Iran's aggressive actions and call on Tehran and its partners and proxies to stop the attacks in the region, a position corroborated by the U.K. Ambassador to the U.N., Barbara Woodward. Away from that, Iran's we'll intent have a word. was to cause significant damage and death in Israel. It launched over 300 munitions, including more than 100 ballistic missiles and land attack cruise missiles at Israel, as well as explosive unmanned aerial vehicles. Iran's reckless actions not only posed a threat to populations in Israel, but also to other UN member states in the region, including Jordan and Iraq. No one wants to see further bloodshed. The United Kingdom is also continuing to work urgently alongside the international community to stabilize the situation and prevent further escalation. The Middle East is on the brink. The people of the region are confronting a real danger of a devastating full-scale conflict. Now is the time to defuse and de-escalate. Now is the time for maximum restraint. In sports, the Super Falcons of Nigeria will start their campaign at the 2024 Olympic Games against Brazil on Thursday, July 25th. The Group C encounter will hold at the Stade Matmut Atlantic A, Bordeaux. Kickoff is 6 p.m. Nigeria time. The three-time African champions will come up against world champion Spain in their second group game at the Stade de la Bourgeois Nons on Saturday, July 28. The encounter will also start at 6 p.m. Nigerian time. Randy Waldrum side will round up their group stage campaign against Japan three days after also at the Stade de la Bourgeois kickoff is 4 p.m. The Super Falcons are making a return to the Olympics after a 16-year absence. The West Africans defeated Banyana Banyana of South Africa 1-0 on aggregates to seal a place at Paris 2024. And with that, we wrap up news update on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all our social media platforms and join our YouTube live stream for more news programs and documentaries. I am Sumaya Abubakar. Thanks for watching.